Pauline Yvonne Parker is a woman from Christ Church, New Zealand, who, together with her friend, Juliet Holm, murdered her mother, Honora Reaper, on June 22, 1954. It's believed that the two girls killed Honora because Juliet and her father were leaving shortly for South Africa, and even though Pauline wanted to go with them, her mother wouldn't let her. According to their own accounts, Pauline and Juliet were devoted friends who collaborated on a series of adventure novels, which they hoped would be bought by a Hollywood studio and made into epic films. The girls' friendship was documented in detail by Pauline in a series of diaries during her teenage years. Pauline Yvonne Parker was born on May 26, 1938. She met Juliet Holm, who was born in London when they both were in their early teens. Pauline came from a working class background, while Juliet, who immigrated to New Zealand with her parents in 1948, was the daughter of Henry Holm, a physicist who's the rector of University of Canterbury in Christchurch. They both attended Christchurch Girls High School. Both girls had debilitating illnesses as children, and they initially bonded over it. According to Pauline's accounts, she and Juliet both romanticized the idea of being sick. The girls invented their own personal religion with its own ideas of morality. They envisioned a parallel dimension called the fourth world, which was their own version of heaven. They felt during moments of spiritual enlightenment that they could enter this fourth world occasionally. Pauline stated that they achieved the spiritual enlightenment through their friendship. The girls eventually formulated a plan to flee to Hollywood. Shortly before all of this, Juliet discovered her mother was having an affair and that her parents intended upon separating. This news seemed to devastate both Pauline and Juliet. Pauline had spent a lot of time with the Holmes and thought of them as her own parents. The girls were unaware, but both sets of parents were collaborating to separate the girls. They viewed their friendship as an unhealthy and possibly homosexual one, which at the time was thought of as a mental illness. The Parkers and Holmes had come up with a plan for Juliet to go with her father to South Africa, where he was moving to after the divorce, and Pauline would stay in New Zealand with her mother. Pauline's mother was extremely concerned about the nature of the girl's friendship and was adamant that Pauline stay with her. On the afternoon of June 22, 1954, the two girls lured Honora Parker to Victoria Park on the Port Hills and beat her with a brick-filled stocking, eventually killing her. The girls would assume that Honora would die with one blow to the head with the brick so they could attribute her death to a fall. After beating Honora, the girls immediately ran to a nearby tea shop where the three had just eaten minutes before. Visibly upset and covered in blood, claiming Pauline's mother had slipped and fallen. When police discovered Honora's body, however, there were major lacerations about her head, neck, and face with minor injuries to her fingers. Police then discovered the murder weapon discarded in the woods nearby. The girl's story of Honora's death being an accident quickly fell apart. The trial was held in August 1954. Pauline's diary was produced as evidence that her mother's death was planned in advance. She had written about their intention to kill Honora and make it look like an accident. The girls were charged before Mr. Justice Adams and a jury with murdering Honora Mary Parker at Christ Church on June 22, 1954. As the trial started, both girls pled not guilty. His honor allowed Parker and Holm to sit in the dock while evidence was being heard. A police matron sat between them. The Crown Prosecutor stated in his opening statement, most of you will have been at some time or another on the Port Hills, and some of you may have possibly been in, been in Victoria Park. This park is situated well up on the slope of the Port Hills at Cashmere and consists of plantations of trees. On a large plateau in the park, there is a building used as a residence by the caretaker and his wife, where they provide meals and teas for visitors. A large part of the plateau, which is almost flat over its whole area, is laid out in lawns. Along its eastern edge, running almost to the caretaker's house and tea room, there is a stone wall from which the hillside slopes sharply down for a considerable distance into a wide valley. 
This steep declivity has been thickly planted, mainly with trees and shrubs, and through these has been cut a zigzag path from a gap in the wall near the tea rooms down to the bottom of the valley. This is a dirt track about four feet wide and steep in some places. About halfway down, something more than 400 yards from its commencement near the tea rooms, its grade becomes less steep for some 75 yards. And there's a small rustic bridge. The path is practically level for, for some 50 or 60 yards. This level portion of the track is the scene of the alleged crime. About 3.30 p.m. on the afternoon of June 22nd, two girls came running into the tea rooms, agitated, breathless, and gasping. Please help us. Mummy has been hurt, covered with blood. A few minutes later, the body of Mrs. Parker was found, her head terribly battered. The situation of her body and the gross injuries to her head were so unusual that the police were called, and it was quickly apparent that she had been killed by being brutally battered about the head with a brick. Mrs. Parker had been known for many years as Mrs. Reaper, but for convenience, I shall call her Mrs. Parker due to the fact that her and Pauline's father were never legally married. That evening, Pauline Parker was arrested, and the next day her close friend, Juliet Holm, was arrested. The evidence will make it terribly clear that these two young accused conspired together to kill the mother of one of them, and horribly carried out their plan into effect. The fact that Pauline Parker and Juliet Holm killed Pauline's mother was never disputed. In finding the teenagers guilty of murder, the jury rejected the defense's assertion that they were insane. Because both were under 18, Pauline was 16 and Juliet 15, neither could be sentenced to death. That punishment was detention during Her Majesty's pleasure. In his final address to the jury, Pauline's lawyer, Alec Haslam, said the two girls had killed Pauline's mother because she was a threat to their remaining together. We had these girls planning their dreadful act, carrying it out so clumsily, and then, after it was over, not showing any remorse. In the opinion of psychiatrists Reginald Mendepat and Francis Bennett, the girls' contempt for the Bible and belief in a fourth world paradise were evidence of insanity. The jury were told the pair thought they had a moral right to kill Anra. They suffered from paranoia, delusions of grandeur, and delusions of ecstasy. Each affects the other and aggravates the process of the disease. The Crown prosecutor maintained that the psychiatrists had contradicted their own evidence under cross-examination. This plainly was a cold, callously committed, and premeditated murder committed by two highly intelligent and perfectly sane girls. They are not incurably insane. My submission is they are incurably bad. Included in the girl's sentence was a provision that they were never to contact one another again. This made it difficult to find appropriate places of detention, especially as an imprisonment in an adult institution was thought to be too severe for such young women. There was only one borstal for young women in the country. In the end, both young women served around five years in prison. Pauline at Paparua Prison near Christ Church, and Juliet initially at Mount Eden, and then Arohata in Tawa near Wellington. Some inserts in Pauline's diary are as follows. 1953, April 3rd, Friday. Today, Juliet and I found the key to the fourth world. We realize now that we have had it in our possession for about six months, but we only realized it on the day of the death of Christ. We saw a gateway through the clouds. We sat on the edge of the path and looked down the hill out over the bay. The island looked beautiful. The sea was blue. Everything was full of peace and bliss. We then realized we had the key. We now know that we are not Jedi as we thought. We have an extra part of our brain which can appreciate the fourth world. Only about 10 people have it. When we die, we will go to the fourth world, but meanwhile, on two days every year, we may use the key and look into that beautiful world, which we have been lucky enough to be allowed to know of on this day of finding the key to the way through the clouds.
Found in Hilary Nathan's, once Pauline Parker, house in Kent, southeast England, amongst a large mural of similar paintings done by Nathan herself around 60 years after the murder of Honora. This image clearly shows two young girls, one brunette, the other blonde, much like Juliet and Pauline, being engulfed in flames. This is how Pauline had occasionally referred to hers and Juliet's relationship in her teenage diary entries. The fact that this mural was found in her home, where she lived alone, recognizes the fact that some 60 years after the murder, Hillary, Pauline, still resents being torn away from Juliet, now Anne Perry, and has not forgotten the fantasy and closeness their relationship had. The following are more prints from the same mural. More inserts from Pauline's diary reads as follows. 1953, September 9th, Wednesday. It was wonderful returning with Juliet. It was as if she had never been away. I believe I could fall in love with Juliet. 1953, October 28th, Wednesday, Juliet's birthday. Told Nicholas this evening that I was no longer very much in love with him because of my imaginary characters. 1954, February 13th. As usual, I woke at five and managed to write a considerable amount. I felt depressed at the thought of the day. There seemed to be no possibility of mother relenting and allowing me to go out to Liam. This afternoon, mother told me I could not go out to Liam again until I was eight stone and more cheerful. As I am now seven stone, there is little hope. She is so unreasonable. Why could mother not die? Dozens of people are dying. Thousands are dying every day. So why not mother and father too? 1954, April 28th. Anger against mother boiled up inside me. It is she who is one of the main obstacles in my path. Suddenly, a means of ridding myself of the obstacle occurred to me. 1954, April 29th. I did not tell Deborah, a.k.a. Juliet, of my plans for removing mother. The last fate I wish to meet is one in a borstal. I am trying to think up some way. I do not want to go to too much trouble, but I want it to appear either a natural or an accidental death. 1954, June 19th. We practically finished our books today, and our main life for the day was to moiter mother. This notion is not a new one. But this time, it's a definite plan, which we intend to carry out. We have worked it all out and are both thrilled with the idea. Naturally, we feel a trifle nervous, but the anticipation is great. 1954, June 21st, Deborah, a.k.a. Juliet, rang, and we decided to use a brick in, in, in a stocking rather than a sandbag. We discussed the moiter fully. I feel very keyed up as if I was planning a surprise party. So the next time I write in the diary, mother will be dead. How odd, yet how pleasing. Then Parker awoke on the morning of the killing and wrote, I am writing a little of this up before the death. I felt very excited in the night before Christmassy last night. I did not have pleasant dreams though. I am about to rise. The departure of the home family was all set for July 3rd. The girls planned to be in good spirits around Mrs. Parker for the next few days, giving her the impression they had come to grips with the idea of being separated. They planned on talking her into coming with them on a farewell outing on the Fort Hills. They would lure her to a secluded and steep part of the hillside and strike her on the head. Once dead, they would run for help, claiming she had been hurt in a fall. On Sunday evening, June 20th, Pauline returned home and was especially nice to her mother, helping her with the housework. Mrs. Parker was delighted and readily agreed to the trip to Victoria Park. Before leaving, Juliet found a half brick and when she arrived at the Parker house, secretly gave it to Pauline. On Tuesday, June 22nd, Juliet had lunch with Pauline and her family, both girls appearing cheerful. After lunch, Mrs. Parker and the two girls walked to the Central City and caught a bus to Kashmir before walking to Victoria Park. 
At about 2.35 p.m., they called at the park kiosk and had afternoon tea. They then left and walked over a hill and down a path into a plantation for what would be the final few minutes of Mrs. Parker's life. The out-of-breath girls came running to the kiosk about 30 minutes later. Pauline spoke first, blurting out, Please help. Mother has fallen and hit her head on a rock and is covered in blood. I think she's dead. Kenneth Ritchie, the husband of the kiosk manageress, searched and found the body. Mrs. Parker's body was a terrible sight for Sergeant R.W. Hope, who arrived to investigate. She lay along the pathway. She was on her back with her head, which was terribly battered, facing slightly downhill. A post-mortem revealed her skull had been smashed. There were about 45 injuries, mainly about the head and face. It was obvious it had been a ferocious attack. A blood-stained brick lay beside her head, and on a nearby grass bank lay a stocking with a foot missing and tied at the ankle. Blood had run down the path, and it was clear Honora had died where she lay. Detectives arrived and uncovered the blood-soaked foot of the stocking, matted with hair. Well, that's it for part one. There's going to be a part two, and we're going to go into more detail um, surrounding the trial next. But in the meantime, I'd like you guys to put in comments um, what you think about the whole story. Do you feel like Juliet and um, Pauline were falling in love? Do you feel like, I kind of feel like, that maybe Pauline was falling in love with Juliet, but Juliet didn't feel the same way about Pauline? Do you feel like they were just best friends? But tell me in the comments how you feel. And go ahead and hit the bell and notification button so that you can get notifications for part two when it comes out, which will be. Mm -hmm.